We are incorporating not one, not two, not three, but yes, four of our Fountainscape products into this Poundless Waterfall. 91 Real Feel 103. Oh, good. It says it's 96 in the shade, boys. <laughs> it's a good thing we got the tents over here when we're working over here. You can see the color scheme on these patio ponds themselves is almost identical to the stack slate over here. So they work really, really well together. I like the difference in the finish between the stack slate and the smooth finish on the bowl. The thing I love about these field stone pieces is that they are nice and flat. They're almost destination rocks, but you can see it's very easy to create a twist and turn with the water. What is up, people? Chris, the Team Aquascape, and we have a special project for you guys. We are going to do a Pondless Waterfall using a variety of our stack slate fountainscapes. We are incorporating not one, not two, not three, but yes, four of our fountainscape products into this Pondless Waterfall. It's going to be a, a water feature built out of Pennsylvania field stone in combination with that stack slate, so we'll get a really nice contrast and similarity with the colors. Let me turn the camera around and show you the canvas for the day. Here is the space we are talking about folks reservoir is going to go over into here we're going to have a trio of either two spheres and a patio pond down here or all three spheres up here and then the patio pond would act as the headwaters over here to start off the stream so it'll be just a meandering stream using that pennsylvania fieldstone big fountainscape in here and then we are going to cut out grass for a nice little bluestone chip seating area something for a cafe table a couple chairs just for the homeowners to enjoy this space you can see it's kind of unusable right now and really unenjoyable so first things first is we're gonna get all of this area cleaned up ready to roll then we'll get our reservoir in and then start rocking and rolling so guys are a few minutes behind me so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some things painted out here on the ground and then we'll get rolling So fellows are finishing cleaning up the rest of the garbage. You can see we've got a majority of all that junk out of here. There's a lot of pea gravel and stuff in here. We're gonna over dig the reservoir, which is a nine small block reservoir right there. And then we will backfill with sand, put some sand underneath the fabric before we put the fabric liner and reservoir back together. So this is the location of the reservoir. Back over there is where the headwaters is going to be. Probably a sphere over there. And then the other two spheres in the bowl down here. So we're gonna do a kind of a fountainscape collection here in the stream using these Pennsylvania fields stone pieces which are right behind me probably won't use all of them but we're gonna use a, a lot of them just to set the angle of the stream that kind of stuff it won't really be much of a waterfall just more of a shallow stream running through here All right, so the liner is in. It is about 99.9 .9 degrees out here, so it's a little hot, so we've got our canopy set up behind us. Just got word that the rock shipment is en route, so it should be here in about a half an hour with the gravel and the rest of our boulders. Once we get the reservoir in, we're gonna backfill with this sand around the outside, because it's pretty rocky, gravel, gravelly soil, so we don't want any sharp stuff to put a hole in the liner as we're backfilling. So we had Matt go out and get some more sand. We did put some sand underneath the liner, uh, as you saw earlier, and now we're gonna get our aqua blocks in, pump vault, and then start backfilling with sand. We are seaming two pieces of liner together right now. We have a 12 by 15 that's going to attach to the 15 by 15 reservoir liner right here. The reason this thing is so big is because we are going to generate an enormous amount of splash from all of the fountainscape stuff. We want to have a big liner up in here because we're going to put probably the big urn up there. We're going to wait and see, but we're going to put one of the spheres up there and even the smaller ones generate an enormous amount of splash. So when you're using these, give yourselves, especially on what is the bigger 
one, at least a three foot section all the way around from the outer diameter of these urns to catch all that splash. That also gives you the freedom to push more water over it. So the more water you push up and out and on top of these urns and spheres and that kind of stuff, the more splash you're gonna generate. So you need to have that extra real estate around the outside with liner to catch all that splash. Otherwise we're gonna be filling this thing a lot. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the two and a half inch holes drilled in the top of the three spheres as well as in the bottom of the patio pond that we are going to use as a little spillway bowl. So that's what the guys are working on now. And then you've got these guys over here doing a seam. Like I said, once we get that finished, we're gonna come in here and start dry fitting the fountainscape stuff and then start rocking in accordingly with that. Once we have kind of the rough idea of where those urns are gonna sit down here, where the spheres are gonna sit down here and the one up there, we'll really have a good idea on where to run all that plumbing. So we'll have kind of a spider web of plumbing down here on top of the reservoir, plumbing the three features. And then we're gonna run one dedicated line all the way up there and then we'll probably split off of that dedicated line. So I have a SLD four to seven thousand pump and then I have an aqua surge two to four thousand pump on this. The two to four thousand is gonna go all the way up top where Juan is at and feed the sphere as well as probably just a fuse out in the stream to give a little bit more water volume there. The four to seven is going to be used for the three features that are down or the three fountainscapes that are gonna be down in here. So that's where we're at currently. Let's go. Okay, little progress update. We got Man Bun Matt and Micho over here hooking the pumps up, kind of finishing up some of the plumbing on the bottom section down here. You can see we've got the patio bowl set in place. We are going to set a big rock back behind it and actually use that as partial frame for the stream slash waterfall in through there. We've got the big sphere there, small sphere, and then the medium is gonna go back up in there. Let's see what it says on the old temperature clock because it looks like we are all sweating. 91 real feel 103. Oh, good. It says it's 96 in the shade boys. It's a good thing we got the tents over here when we're working over here. So just wanted to take a quick second and kind of pause our construction process and give you guys an explanation of what is happening. So we have our small sphere is all plumbed. You can see we've got our two inch pipe plumbed up through here and then they used a shitload of silicone to seal up around that. So that's good. I don't think it's gonna leak. On to the next one. Here's one that we have not finished yet. So you can see we ran the flex pipe into the bottom to an elbow to a piece of rigid two inch stand pipe right here. But now what we're gonna do is we are going to use cobbles to fill in this void space inside the sphere itself. Hold this stand pipe right in the center as well as give some weight to the bottom of this. There's a couple kids that live here and not that they're gonna be climbing all over but just in case they do we don't want them to shift that thing out of place or move it or cave it in so we are going to give it some stability by adding some weight on the inside of the sphere moving over here is our patio pond that we engineered and that's a fancy word for saying we just cut a notch in right there and that water is going to pull up in the bowl and then overflow and spill out of there in like a ribbon style fall really really neat effect that I love using these patio ponds another thing I love about the patio ponds is you can see the color scale scheme on these patio ponds themselves is almost identical to the stack slate over here. So they work really, really well together. I like the difference in the finish between the stack slate and the smooth finish on the bowl. You can see we've got a piece of two inch pipe coming up. And the reason we did that is because I didn't want to have the two inch bulkhead fitting that's at the bottom of the bowl to get clogged with rock and gravel. The reason we put rock and gravel in here is I wanted to make a aquatic plant pot. I don't know, you could throw some a chorus in there, some, you know, any of your sedges, just some nice edge water plants, and then it will overflow. So there will only be about two inches of water in here, but the reason that that stand pipe is there is so that rock and gravel didn't migrate down and clog the pipe that is feeding the bowl, which is right here. We are gonna put a light down at the base of this waterfall, and there is also a light in the bowl 
itself, just to give it a little bit more depth. We are also going to light up these spheres. We're gonna put three more lights down in the reservoir itself, and then we're gonna save a couple for the last sphere, which sits right up in here, and that is the medium sphere, which is sitting right there. So we are pretty close to having this thing almost done. Our Pennsylvania Fieldstone pieces are put in. You can see we're starting to do our little avalanche or landslide areas. The thing I love about these Fieldstone pieces is that they are nice and flat. They're almost destination rocks, but you can see it's very easy to create a twist and turn with the water. So water is going to actually overflow at this rock. This rock right here is setting the height for water level and all the pooling area back behind here. So when we were setting these rocks, we brought a level over and we started to see where we need to have the backside of the rocks or the tops of the rock be based on water level. So it's all about using the bubble on the level. As you can see, the backside of that rock, if it comes up to level, We've got about an inch and a half of space down there. Now water is going to be about two feet wide in here. So we should have about an inch thick of water. And so the thickness of that water or the height of that water is going to dictate how high we are gonna to have to have the rocks all along this edge. So if we played our cards right and my guesstimations were correct, we should be very, very close, but not leaking and keeping all the water inside the liner. So just to give you a little progress update, we're gonna keep rolling up in here, get this sphere set, get everything plumbed up. We're gonna get one more piece of field stone back over into here and then gravel all this stuff up. We are going to be landscaping this so it'll be a nice finished product once we're wrapped up. So we still have our work cut out for us. It is still hot as balls out here but we're making great progress and the guy's spirits are up high so that's good. What is up everybody? We are back for day two on this project. Today is finishing touches. We are going to be wrapping this present for the homeowners to unwrap when they get home. So we're gonna put the aquatic plants in, the terrestrial plants around the outside in the landscape, dress everything up, get all of our edges done, and get this baby picture perfect. So without further ado, we're gonna keep rolling. Big step in the process, the underlayment for the bluestone chip patio is going down. We have our area excavated, all the sods stripped away. We're gonna put black steel edging all the way around in through here, edge it out really nice. We spent the morning just doing edges. This is not typical, some of our edges, like with all this gravel and stuff, they wanted more of a zero scaping look. So what we did is we left the liner long all the way around. So the liner comes all the way up to the sidewalk and all the way to the house. And we incorporated Creeping Jenny inside the liner to have wet feet in all these little pooling areas back in here. So it's basically just a big trough. You will see the movement of water creeping back down in between the Pennsylvania fields. So which is a really, really neat effect. It's got a really awesome S-shaped curve or serpentine curve in through here. Water flows down through there. You really don't even see the waterfalls at all. It's gonna dribble right down through there, which is really what the customer was looking for. So a little unique. Uh, it's much more of a fountainscape feature with a lot of rock, but we're gonna try and soften it up with aquatic plants. We got a beautiful Japanese tree lilac in there in the corner. Eventually, this thing's going to spread out a little bit. I know it's planted a little close to the house. We wanna soften up that corner without completely blocking that view and not running right up into the telephone pole and all the power lines. So it's gonna go up, soften that corner, give some verticality there. We're gonna find some stuff to go underneath to plant this up in the planting bed. And then a little bit more in through here, probably some sedums. The customer has an aversion to rabbits. So we need to find something that is not going to harbor any rabbits, male, female, or their baby. So that's a little bit of a challenge and a unique request. So that is that. We're gonna get rolling. I'm gonna run and go get plants and then we'll be back. It has been an incredible pleasure to bring this very unique backyard space to life and really take it to its fullest potential. It's been incredibly hot. We've had our fair share of challenges, but I hope you enjoyed the journey. I am super impressed with how it came out. The customer just came out and they didn't want to be on camera, so sorry you're not going to get to see their reaction, but they were completely blown away. And I can't blame them because I'm blown away. I'm blown away every time when we turn the water on, plug the pump in, and see what kind of beauty
beauty and magic we're able to create on a daily basis and bringing people the aquascape lifestyle. Till next time folks, and remember, please comment, let us know if you have any questions, and don't forget to check out the foreman notes in case you guys had any questions on how this job was put together, what was bid out on this project, so on and so forth. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, peace.